All right, so in this video, we're going to take a look at writing a class in which we'll use the rule of three. So we discussed in our last video that we can have classes that have data members that can reference things out on the heap. So what that means is, is we're uh, executing a particular program. We can actually create something out on the heap dynamically, and then we can have a data member referencing that thing. And in those cases, we have to go in and actually write a copy constructor, an overloaded assignment, and a destructor. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to go here to File, and then to New, and then to C++ Project, and specify the name of the project. The name of the project I'm going to have is Rule of Three. You can name it whatever you like. And I'm going to have Empty Project specified here, and then our tool chain is going to be MinGW. And go ahead and click on Finish. So now we have our project here, which is just a folder on our system. And I'm going to right-click on that and go to New, and then specify uh, that we're going to create a header file. And so the name of this header file is going to be gcharacter.h. So g is for game, so we're just imagining that we're creating a header file for a game character. And go ahead and click on Finish. So now we have our game character, our g character file, our gcharacter.h. And this is where we'll specify our class interface. Okay, so the first thing we need to have is a couple of pound include statements. So we'll do a pound include for IO stream. And we'll also do another pound include for the uh, string class. We need to have both of those in this particular class. And then we'll go ahead and create our class. And it's going to be called G character for game character. Open brace. And now we'll specify, well, the first thing we'll specify here is a friend function. So we'll say that we're going to overload the insertion operator so that whenever we output a game character object, uh, we can actually feed that into either the console or some other file. So we'll just simply make a friend here and say std colon colon for the scope operator, o stream, ampersand, and then operator, and then whatever operator we're overloading. In this case, we're overloading the insertion operator, and then open parentheses and specify the parameters there. So we'll have std colon colon o stream, uh, ampersand, OS, comma, and then we'll pass in a constant reference to our G character object. So we'll have const, and then G character, and then ampersand, and we'll just say the name of that is GC, semicolon. So that's just simply a function prototype for being able to overload the insertion operator. I covered this in more detail in one of my previous videos. I'll probably put a link to that video in the description to this particular video if you want to go back and review what's going on in terms of the, the syntax there for overloading the insertion operator. So now we'll have a public section here for our class. So in the public section, we'll have a, um, a static member uh, for the number of elements that we'll have in our tool array. So we'll say static const int, and I'm going to just call this default capacity. So if we're constructing a new G character or object, and they don't specify a particular capacity for the uh, tool capacity, we'll say that it's five. So we'll have that. And now we'll specify the constructor. So we'll have a uh, comment here to say that we're writing the constructor. So this is going to be, the constructor always has the same name as the class. So we'll have G character here. And then have open parentheses, std colon colon. And now we'll have to specify a string for the name. So in this particular example, I'm going to depart from what I covered in the theory or conceptual video relating to these concepts of using the rule of three. And I'm going to just specify that we have a name for our G character and that we have our capacity for the number of tools that we can have in our tool array. So what I'll say here, we're going to make this uh, constructor also act as a default constructor. So if they don't specify a name for the character, we'll just say that the name for the uh, game character is going to be John. And then we'll say int capacity, and we'll sign for the default value there. If they don't specify a, a default uh, value whenever they construct it, we'll say that it's going to be the default capacity. That was the whole reason we did the previous line, right? So now we have uh, the default capacity, and in that with a semicolon. So now we have our prototype, our function prototype for our constructor that also acts as a default constructor. So now we'll have a copy constructor. So that's one of the new things that we're looking at. 
So it turns out that the function prototype for the copy constructor starts out very similarly to our constructor. Since it is a constructor, we'd start with uh, G character here. And we'll have open parentheses, and then we'll have const space G character. So what we're going to do is we, we're going to pass in a G character by constant reference, if I can spell correct uh, character here. So we have G character, ampersand, and then source, and then semicolon. So that's the only thing we need there for the copy constructor. So we'll be constructing a brand new uh, G character object uh, based off of some particular G character object that we're passing in by constant reference. So that's what's going on here in the parentheses is we're just specifying the uh, G character object that we're going to be referencing to construct a new G, G character object. And then we'll have our overloaded assignment operator. So we'll do overloaded assignment. And for overloaded assignment, we're going to be returning a reference to a G character object. So we'll have G character ampersand here. And the reason why we want to return a reference to the G character object uh, that we're doing the assignment to is so we can actually chain uh, multiple G character objects together with the assignment operator. So you could have GC1 assignment operator, GC2 assignment operator, GC3 semicolon or whatever it may be. So if we didn't have that, we wouldn't be able to do those multiple chainings between assignment operators. So now we'll have operator and whatever operator we're overloading. I'm trying to overload the uh, plus operator, but we need to do the assignment operator. And then we'll say const and then G character. Should have picked a much shorter name for the name of our uh, class here. So we got G character, ampersand, and then source is just the identifier I'm going to use. And that's the end of the overloaded assignment operator prototype. Again, we're passing in by constant reference some particular G character object uh, that we need to base or do the assignment from. So we're assigning from this particular G character object here. And then finally, uh, as part of our big three, we need to do the destructor. So I'll specify destructor here as the comment. And the destructor is really simple in terms of the syntax for the prototype. We just use the tilde and then we say G character and open print, close print, semicolon. And that's it. That's the only thing we need to do for the destructor. And then I'm going to have uh, one uh, member function in here other than the big three uh, or the rule of three. So we'll do insert. Uh, I'll make a comment here that we're in, uh, writing an insert function so that we can actually insert a new tool uh, into the uh, tool array or the tool holder. So we'll say that this is a void returning function. The name of it is going to be insert and we just pass in by constant reference whatever the name of the uh, tool is that we're going to be adding in. So if you watched the video in which I was covering the theory and the concepts related to this, you would have noticed that I made use of a, a tool class or a tool pointer whenever we're referring to the tool array. So instead of actually having a, a tool class so that we can have a tool pointer, I'm going to just have a, a string class. And so we can make use of a string to actually specify the name of our tools. So th that's going to be passed in by constant reference since we're not going to be changing the name. So we have that is the function prototype for the insert. And now we can go in and write our data members in our private section. So we'll have a private section here. And then we'll just specify a comment uh, saying data members. So we have only four data members in this particular example. So the very first uh, data member that we'll have is for the name of our game character. And subtype string. And then we'll have an int for capacity. So that's specifying the capacity of our tool array. And then we'll specify the number of uh, elements that we've actually used in that tool array. And then finally, we'll have another string. And this time we'll have a string pointer that's able to reference our particular tool array, which is going to be of type string. And we'll just call that one tool holder. And that's it. That's all we need to have in terms of the header file. And now we can go to the CPP file and actually specify the definitions uh, for this particular class. So let's go and do that.